Welcome to MediCorea. In today's video, I'm going to be taking you through the Framingham criteria for the diagnosis of heart failure. The Framingham criteria are used to diagnose heart failure based on symptoms, physical signs, tests, and imaging studies. It consists of major and minor criteria. In order to make a diagnosis of heart failure, a patient needs to meet at least either two major criteria or one major criteria plus two minor criteria. The more the criteria met, the more certain the diagnosis. I need you to remember to always probe for the cause of heart failure because there are different conditions that could lead to heart failure. Let's start with the major criteria for the diagnosis of heart failure. I will start off with a very important statement in the interpretation of an ECG. Normal P waves are rarely higher than 0.25 millivolts. Now this statement is going to act as our mnemonic for remembering the major criteria. I'm going to go through them one by one and then we shall summarize them over again. We shall skip the word normal and start with the letter P. P stands for paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea, which basically means that the patient experiences episodes of breathlessness while they sleep at night. The letter W in blue stands for weight loss of 4.5 kilograms in 5 days in response to treatment. In other words, if you have a patient in whom you suspect heart failure and then you institute treatment and then they lose a weight of at least 4.5 kilograms in 5 days, it makes you more sure of the diagnosis you made. The letter A in green stands for autopsy findings. Sometimes the diagnosis of heart failure is made post-mortem, in which case the autopsy findings include pulmonary edema, visceral congestion, and cardiomegaly. The first word in anemonic, nomo, stands for neck, and the letter V in the word waves stands for vein. So together, this stands for neck vein distension. I decided to combine this because one might prefer to remember the neck with the word normal or they might find it easier to remember the word vein from the V. The letter E in the word waves stands for edema but in our major criteria we are concerned with acute pulmonary edema. Now this is usually a finding that is made on imaging studies. The letter S in the word waves stands for an A3 gallop. The S3 heart sound is heard on auscultation of the chest. Our first letter R in the word rarely stands for radiographic cardiomegaly. In other words, if you take an x-ray or CT scan of this patient, you are going to find that the heart is enlarged. The second R in the word rarely stands for rails. Rails are added breath sounds that you will pick up on auscultation. This will usually be heard over the basis of the lungs. The letter H in the word higher stands for hepatojugular reflex. This means that while you perform a physical examination on the patient and then while you apply pressure on the liver, you observe for distension of the neck veins. The 0.25 in blue stands for the 25 seconds of circulation time. So a circulation time exceeding 25 seconds is one of the major criteria. The last V in millivolts stands for venous pressure. In this case, you are doing invasive monitoring of the patient's central venous pressure. So to meet this criterion, the central venous pressure needs to exceed 16 centimeters of water. One second, let's summarize our major criteria. Normal for neck, P for paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea, W for weight loss, A for autopsy findings, V for vein. So normal plus V gives us neck vein distension. You choose whichever is easier for you to remember. E for acute pulmonary edema, S for the A3 gallop, the first R for radiographic cardiomegaly, the second R for rails, H for hepatojugular reflux, 0.25 for a circulation time greater than 25 seconds, and the last V for central venous pressure. Like earlier said, if a patient meets two or more of these criteria, a diagnosis of heart failure can be made. If the patient only meets one major criterion, 
then in addition to the major criterion the patient needs to meet at least two minor criteria for you to diagnose them with heart failure. In that case, let's flip over and talk about the minor criteria. Can vitamin E effectively disperse heart thrombi? Maybe to help you remember this mnemonic, let me get down to how I came up with it. Now, there has been research that shows that vitamin E has some anticoagulant properties that could be protective against thrombotic events. But then the question of whether vitamin E can effectively disperse already formed thrombi is rather a minor question. The C in CAN stands for cough. In this case, nocturnal cough. In other words, the patient has a history of coughing at night. The V in vitamin stands for vital capacity. Now, this criterion is met if there is a decrease in vital capacity by one third the maximal value recorded. The E here again stands for edema, but this time it is bilateral ankle edema as opposed to the acute pulmonary edema in the major criteria. The E in effectively stands for effusion. The criterion is met if the patient has pleural effusion. The D in disperse stands for dyspnea. The criterion is met if the patient becomes breathless on ordinary exertion such as walking a short distance or performing a task as minor as dressing up. The H in heart stands for hepatomegaly. The T in thrombi stands for tachycardia. Tachycardia is a heart rate that is greater than 120 beats per minute. Again, let's summarize our minor criteria. C for nocturnal cough, V for a decrease in vital capacity by one third the maximal value recorded, E for bilateral ankle edema, E for pleural effusion, D for dyspnea on ordinary exertion, H for hepatomegaly, and T for tachycardia. To diagnose one with heart failure using minor criteria, there must be at least one major criterion plus at least two minor criteria. In other words, the minor criteria alone are not enough to diagnose heart failure. One very key important point to make here again, and I need to stress it so much, a minor criterion is only qualified if they cannot be explained by anything else other than heart failure. For example, patients with asthma have a cough that wasn't at night. Therefore, in such a patient, nocturnal cough is not a minor criterion. A patient with restrictive lung disease cannot meet the criterion for decrease in vital capacity. A patient with bilateral ankle edema as a result of renal failure cannot meet a minor criterion for heart failure. A patient with a pleural effusion due to a paraneumonic effusion cannot also meet the minor criterion. A patient with dyspnea due to pneumonia does not also meet the minor criterion for heart failure. A patient with hepatomegaly due to hepatitis does not meet the minor criteria. Or a patient whose tachycardia can be explained by thyrotoxicosis also does not meet the minor criteria. In other words, before you include a minor criterion, try to seek for an alternative explanation for the symptom. If there is no alternative explanation, then it qualifies to be a minor criterion for diagnosing heart failure. Thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and turn on your notifications. And don't hesitate to share with someone that might benefit. Thank you and see you in the next video.